every time I try and imagine him as somebody more attractive, I just remember that this guy is on the cover. I am so nervous about picking this up. Am I even in focus? Because I don't know if my camera can see my face. I'm a visual reader, remember? Which I gotta say, it does get very interesting when we're talking about smart. That's two thirds of the couch, man. So just before we get into today's reading vlog, I would love to introduce you guys to the sponsor of today's video, which is once again, the wonderful Book of the Month. So I'm pretty sure the majority of you guys are familiar with Book of the Month by now, but just in case you aren't, Book of the Month is a US and Canadian monthly book curation service, which brings you a range of five to seven brand new hardback releases to choose from every single month that you can have delivered straight to your door in this little blue box in a Book of the Month edition. And it also comes with a pretty cute punny bookmark. So out of Book of the Month's seven January titles, I of course picked the two romances, the first of which is Luna Love by Lauren Kunk Jessen. This is about a woman who is about to take over her grandmother's matchmaking service and I think she organises to have an app made. However, the app is completely different to the vision that she had for it and it's the kind of thing that's going to bring shame to her family business. I believe that this is actually a romance between the woman who's taken over her grandmother's matchmaking service and the guy that she's coming to hate, which is the man that designed the app. The second romance pick this month is The Reunion by Kayla Olsen. This one I think is a second chance romance and it involves something that I actually enjoy in a contemporary story, which is celebrity characters. So our main character of The Reunion is a former star of a TV show and she left the TV show a few years ago after the betrayal of her on-screen love interest and real life best friend. Now it's 20 years since the show first premiered and the showrunners are putting together a cast reunion which gives the main character the opportunity to reconnect with her former on-screen love interest and best friend. But if you guys want to get a brand new 2023 hardback release delivered straight to your door I do have a code for you guys. You can go to my description box, click on the link right at the top and enter the code Becca at checkout and you will get your very first book of the month for just $9.99. And once again, a big thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Good morning and welcome to Christmas week from The Grinch. I'm not feeling it this year, guys. I actually planned to do a Christmas romance vlog starting today after I did, was it my unboxing? And I asked you guys if you wanted to see that. Some of you guys replied, yes, obviously, if you don't wanna see it, you didn't say that you didn't. So I don't know what the general consensus on Christmas romances is but <laughs> I just the thought of picking up a Christmas romance right now is very off-putting to me. I have to say though I've never bought a Christmas romance in my life. Well I have technically but not willingly like I haven't gone into a shop seen a Christmas romance picked it up and brought it home. All of the ones that I have are from like various subscriptions. Next year, I'm gonna put it in my planner to do a Christmas romance vlog earlier in December to see, I guess, if I do enjoy them. Cause for some reason, I don't know whether it's just cause I'm feeling so unfestive, but the thought of picking up a Christmas romance right now I literally could think of nothing worse. So we're just gonna be reading some things from my TBR instead. I think when it comes to December, my attitude is very much catch up on end of year goals, finish as many series as possible, squeeze in as many things as you kind of wanted to do this year. And Christmas romances, obviously not high on that list. So I would rather just like, flow through my TBR, surprisingly still in a fantasy mood considering I've just got out of the Goldsboro vlog. And I do feel like enjoying the final strife um, has actually helped me with that. And there's a lot of desert fantasy on my TBR this month. I don't know if I'm gonna get to it because we only have like 12 days left, but there is quite a bit of desert fantasy on there, which is in terms of like fantasy setting subgenres, actually really not my favorite. But regardless, Merry Christmas. When you're seeing this, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I hope I did too. And I hope at some point, I start feeling festive. But in terms of reading, I have started Famine by Laura Thalassa. We're gonna be going through some book club stuff this week, hopefully at least starting a second book club book in this vlog. I honestly don't know how reading's gonna go because my plan for today is to film the last two videos of the year. This vlog is actually the final video of the year, but obviously like I'm, I'm filming that along the way. So I need to film my last two sit down videos of the year and hopefully get at least one of them edited. Cause I had grand plans when I I closed my shop because of Royal Mail strikes at the beginning of December. I was like, you are gonna be done with like two weeks until Christmas. And here we are six days until Christmas. And I've had three videos to sort out since 
well, for the last week, I've made absolutely no progress. And I, it's not for lack of trying. I just don't seem to have got any further towards finishing my video schedule for the year. Cannot remember why. I started talking about that now, but Famine by Laura Thalassa. I did start this last night. I have read a grand total of 10 pages, so I'm not very far in, but this is my Patreon book club, the Alpha Hope book club book for December. It's a fantasy romance book club and it's like catch up book club, the next round having just been announced, where we read entire series because I'm just not about the life of doing a book club where you're starting a new series every month. Could never be me. That just sounds like my personal hell. So um, yeah, we're doing, we're doing series we read series all the way through you guys know the drill with this one right now it's the third consecutive month that we've done this but this series the four horsemen series is about the four horsemen of the apocalypse in every book one of the four horsemen comes down to earth and falls in love with a human woman who makes him change his mind about destroying the world so i've been told that this is going to be my favorite one of the series and so far in my patreon discord a lot of people also seem to be feeling like it's their favorite one of the series so i don't know because i really loved war War was a cool guy and I've heard that Famine is like the sassy one, the one who's a bit of a dick of the group. So we'll definitely see um, how that plays out but I have absolutely nothing to report so far. I don't even really know what part of the world Famine's in because I am just not very far into this. When I was doing the Girls Rove vlog as well, I did read the novella in, what's the series called? The Savar Miller series. <laughs> I read the novella because I was reading Ordinary Monsters and I was so bored that I just wanted something in between to pick up the pace. It's only like 80 pages, but I enjoyed it. And I also started Promises and Pomegranates, which is the first book in that series. I am 12% into that. I haven't picked it up in a couple of days. I don't know if I'm going to pick it up while I'm reading this because I've been trying to do what I used to do where I have like books in different formats on the go. So like this would be my physical Promises and Pomegranates would be my ebook. But I do have an ebook copy of this because it's on KU so I feel like it would be better to make more progress in this instead of reading a second book alongside it but this is also ongoing and this is a mafia romance it's a dark romance about this girl who's from a family like she's supposed to marry this guy and the guy who is essentially the I don't know mafia terms but he kills people for the family and he's like friends with her father and he ends up kind of forcing her father into getting his daughter to marry him and it's like loosely based on Hades and Persephone so I had a really good time with the novella 12% into the first book and I won't mention this very much I imagine throughout any video um until I finish it or if it kind of picks up to the point where it's my main read but just thought I'd let you know that this is going on in the background because obviously as it wasn't relevant to the Goldsboro subscription I wasn't mentioning it in that vlog so um yeah I'm gonna go I'm gonna finish editing the Goldsboro vlog and I'm going to start putting together the tier ranking so that I can film my tier ranking 2022 books and then move on to filming my final book haul of the year which I want to do a little bit tipsy but what that means is that I'm going to be getting tipsy in the middle of the day and then kind of like having to sober up so that I can edit and also like work out and, and live the rest of my day as normal. So we'll see how that goes. And I got to admit I am actually fully procrastinating on filming right now because I'm not feeling it but um I, I need to get on with it because when these two videos are done, then I'm done for the rest of the year, which is only like less than two weeks, but still. I want pure. Why not? Some people find pain. Huh? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Hello from my final day of work. Oh, it's not my final day of work for the year. It's my final day of work for a week. But I've just finished editing my tier ranking video, which as usual, when we're dealing with multiple tracks and having to edit everything at once was a little bit of a pain. It took me uh, four hours of solid editing to do, but we are finally there, which means all I need to do now is proof it and make three thumbnails and then I'm done. I do have Patreon sprints with Aaron that started in like 40 minutes and I really want it to be done by then, but I know that it's gonna take me longer than that sadly to make the thumbnails. <laughs> so I tried, I'm nearly there. I'm very, very close in considering how like yesterday morning and Sunday, I didn't feel like I could turn around three videos with any amount of speed. I'm very like happy with how far I've come, but I have received a parcel today which is a christmas gift from my pal beth who texted me this morning and gave me the like you know the estimated delivery time on this and said send me a picture of it when you get it i'm very jealous so i'm taking that to mean that she wants me to open this now and i did have a little look 
on the envelope and it says from brownie god <laughs> so i'm also very excited and that would explain why it needs opening now i love um metallic bubble wrap envelopes oh it smells like brownie hey babe you can smell it too can't you i have to say i've ordered from a lot of brownie companies in my time i am a brownie expert but i've never ordered from brownie god oh my god this is so cool i do not want to eat this it is how many 12 mini brownies i think they're brownies the brownie god so i would assume gooey brownies and melted chocolate topping it says ho 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 that is so cool i want to eat one right now but beth said she wanted a picture so i can't thank you so much beth i'm really glad that these have arrived today actually because because the cheesecake for Christmas Day has also arrived. And obviously like I can't eat that until Christmas Day. So I'll demolish these in the meantime. P.S. Mind if I take a painting start to eat my new place? Many thanks for the reminder. Hope you're doing well on this fine Wednesday. It's my first day as a free woman. I did get all my videos done yesterday. So now I'm just doing like general Christmas prep and house stuff. And today I have been out and got like the last few Christmas presents that I needed. I've done a little bit of wrapping. And now I'm gonna do some cleaning. I'm gonna do the majority on Friday ready for like Christmas Eve, Christmas day. And everything's pretty much done anyway. It'll just be a wipe around and a clean of the kitchen and the bathroom but something that i am doing today is i'm doing the annual scrape of my candle area so this is all gonna come off and i know it looks horrible like this looks like it would be a nightmare to get off but it all scrapes off super easily and it's one of the most satisfying things that i do every year to be honest so yeah i'm gonna crack on with that i don't know what i'm doing this evening i do need to work out we're doing 30 minutes of cardio and 10 minutes of court i think today and curtis is going to his mum's for dinner so it's going to be a chicken wing night which is obviously my favorite and then i guess i'll try and get through a big chunk of famine i'm like 100 pages in and i'm doing like a spoiler vlog for it which i actually need to start at some point today as well wish me some speedy cleaning because i actually have cramps that kill me right now and I want to go lay down with a hot water bottle if I'm being honest. Hey, I own a bakery in town. <laughs> You're the big city CEO that's coming in to take over my bakery. <laughs> that's what I thought when I was leaving. I was like, I feel like I'm watching a Hallmark movie in reverse. We're right, but it just made me think of it because we're right in the middle of the Hellraiser series. Like Justin, there's no dose. And Logan's one of the funniest people I've ever met. Like, let's just start with you. Did you see him? And then you just, like, get around. Yeah. And you're like, oh, fuck. Everything's great. Right. Right. Like, it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, we're gonna break. I wrote a message to you. Patience. Yeah. Just so much. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an aftershot. I'm not 100% done yet because as you guys, you guys can see better than I can actually, there's like splotches here where there's still a bit of wax on. So I'm boiling the kettle so I can go over it with a really, really hot cloth to melt all of the wax that's left over. But considering what it looked like a second ago, it took less than 10 minutes to get it to this level. And sorry, but look, just look how satisfying that is. I am putting my book down for the day because I am 194 pages into famine and I'm just not feeling it. And I don't, I think that it might be me, which is why I'm putting my book down. Only for tonight, I will pick it back up again tomorrow. But I've just read like, I think about 80 pages and I've, I, I don't feel like I'm in it. And I don't feel especially, I feel distracted when I'm reading, but in myself, in my mind, I don't feel particularly distracted or anxious or tired. So I don't know whether it's the book or whether it's me, but I'm willing to give the book the benefit of the doubt right now and think that I'm the problem <laughs> and put it down until tomorrow, pick it up like when I'm feeling a little bit fresher. Because even in terms of like, it's a busy time of year, I guess I have stuff I need to do before Sunday, but nothing major. Like I actually feel like I'm pretty well prepared. So it's not even like that is getting to me and making me distracted. And I'm sad about it as well, because a lot of people thought that this would be my favorite in the series. And so far I'm just really not feeling it. An issue could be as well, obviously that all of the books in this series are pretty similar. It's like Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse meets Human Woman. They fall in love and she's horrified by all of the people he slaughters, but she like tempers him eventually is like the general plot. So I don't know whether it's the fact that I'm not 
especially hyped to read the same kind of story again that's making me less into it but this one in particular is set in south america it's set in brazil and our main character is a sex worker so it starts off where famine has come to sack her city and well <laughs> and she her, her madam takes her to meet famine she's kind of like offered to him but he has no interest in sex which i am finding a little bit weird because at the minute it is only war that's been interested in like sex or women at all but i guess that could be because his like war is more tied to humanity than any of the other horsemen are but he wants nothing to do with her and he takes well his men like his guardsmen take everyone from the city out back and slaughter them but our main character survives and she hunts him down and holds a knife to his neck because she was hoping that he would recognize her because five years prior she actually found him mutilated on the side of the road and dragged him to a safe location where he could like regenerate and heal because they're all immortal so where he could regenerate in safety and she like protected him from people like because she could hear people coming looking for him and stuff at the time that that happened because then a flashback shortly follows where it happens at the time that it happened he just kind of assumed that she would go with him but he sacked her city so she said no because she was horrified at what he'd done after she just like shown mercy and saved him so five years have passed and she expected him to recognize her and he didn't so after she recovers from almost being killed she hunts him down and like kind of questions him on how he didn't recognize her and from that moment on he makes her go with him and then we're kind of in the same plot line as the other four are it's fine so far i i just truly don't know whether it's the horseman or me that's the issue in this one i feel like i should like it because he's sassy but he isn't sassy in the way that i thought he was going to be i assumed he was going to be like a very i guess cassian level of sass where it's like jokey and flirty but it's not flirty at all. He's very disinterested. He has absolutely no fucks to give. And I, I just don't get why I'm not into it because occasionally there will be a one-liner or like the banter I start to enjoy. But then overall, like he's just not doing it for me. And I don't know whether it's this guy on the cover because every time I try and imagine him as somebody more attractive, I just remember that this guy is on the cover and it completely throws me out of it. But um, yeah, I'm not having as good a time as I thought I was going to do with this. So I am going to just like put it down for now. Play some Final Fantasy. I don't know what time it is. I think it's nearly 10 p.m. But when I'm off for Christmas, I always have a little bit more time to play video games. So I'm going to go back to Final Fantasy X, I think, and try and finish that because I am actually up to the final battle with Sin. Like, do you know the point of no return where you have to get all your affairs in order? But because it was a replay for me anyway, I wanted to get all of the celestial weapons and stuff. But I honestly just can't be bothered grinding for them. And I know that I can't get them all because I can't dodge 100 bolts of lightning in the Thunder Plains. I've never been able to. I can't complete the stupid fucking chocobo race where you have to is it balloons that you're trying to get and avoid the seagulls and it's impossible it's the controls it's a playstation 2 game the controls are so bad compared to the controls we have now that i can't master them because i'm used to like much more responsive controls and then oh my god the blitz ball i love blitz ball but the blitz ball tournament where you have to do like 10 games to get a piece of waka's celestial weapon and then you have to do another tournament to get fuck all and so then do another one where you get whatever it is like the next piece of waka's celestial weapon is driving me mad and that is the main reason why i haven't finished it because i was struggling to want to go back and just grind for the celestial weapon so we're gonna boot it up we're gonna see where i'm up to i'll assemble these celestial weapons that I do have and then just get on with the game so that I can finally finish my replay. So I'm now 320 pages into Famine. And I gotta say the vibes are not immaculate. I'm not having a good time and I, I genuinely do not know why I am disliking this book so much. I considered putting it down and picking it up next week, but I just had a feeling that I would absolutely not pick it up next week if I did that. And obviously like it's my Patreon book club book, so I'm not going to DNF it, especially when I really enjoyed the second book in the series, War. And I also had a really good time with Pestilence. Famine himself as a horseman, he's kind of sexy. He's not War, but there are things about him, like his one-liners, the way he deadpans, um, his reluctance to enjoy himself in any capacity i'm enjoying about him and there was a scene in here i think it was about 50 pages ago now where i really started to warm 
to him a little bit more and I thought the book would pick up from there but then I'm just not enjoying it. The main character is fine. She's not my favourite one. I think I preferred Miriam in War to Anna in this but she's fine and I just I don't know whether it's because the plot's kind of slow. Like in War there was a lot going on surrounding the main couple like there was like war bands and like politics and the main character had other friends and other people going on within the war band and there was a lot more I guess action in the plot. It was generally like faster moving maybe covered a, a, a bigger space of time and pestilence I feel like they did move around a little bit more than they did in this one. Something that is tedious about this series is that it is the same kind of plot where like the horseman and the human woman end up traveling together as the horseman is spreading like whatever his version of the apocalypse is across the world but with this one it feels particularly slow like I feel like they're only in the third city and they've been in this one for quite some time now which makes sense because like things actually happen in this city but I just I'm so bored and I just don't want to read it and I don't know why everybody really did think this was going to be my favorite <laughs> so I'm not having a great time it's Christmas Eve tomorrow as well I have 140 pages left so I do want it done but I don't know what my plans are for tomorrow I need to go to my dad's because we're having Christmas at my dad's this year but I need to drop off the turkey because they are doing like ham, roast potatoes, veg, etc. I'm providing dessert and I also got a turkey because my favorite part of Christmas is the leftovers. So I need to drop the turkey off tomorrow so that my dad can put it in the oven on Christmas day morning and then I'll um I'll sort it out when I get there a couple of hours later so I'm also taking the cheesecake with me as well so that he can defrost it in his fridge and then my only other plans was to have I'm properly boring we were gonna have a fortnight night me Curtis and Ryan but Ryan texted me earlier and said that he's got tonsillitis so I don't know if that's going ahead but yeah aside from that I do want to finish this book I think tonight I wanted to get to page 400 but I think I'm going to try and aim for 360 which is another 40 pages because that will leave me with like just 100 pages left which like I said hopefully I can read tomorrow. So I'm popping in to give you guys an update on my hair. I didn't mention it in last week's vlog because by the time we got around to it that vlog was like I knew even though I hadn't started editing that that vlog was going to be ridiculously long but last week I got a keratin treatment on my hair. You guys have seen my hair naturally like a bunch. It's really curly, it's really big and because I've started to grow it a little bit like when it gets past here it also starts to get really unmanageable because it's just too thick like I can't get my hands through it. So I got a keratin treatment which is essentially where you have like protein sealed into your hair. It's kind of like a, a, a permanent straighten or like a chemical straighten but it doesn't make your hair poker straight as you can see. They call it like a Brazilian blow dry but you essentially have to keep it dry for three days after you've had it done and a lot of people on Instagram, because I posted on Instagram that I'd had it done, and a few people asked for updates on the treatment as a whole, like as moving forward. So this is what it looks like after the first wash. It's, as you can tell, not poker straight, but compared to what you guys know my natural hair looks like, it's a massive improvement. This looks like I've straightened my hair, and then it's about two days later and I'd have had it up in a bun, which is a massive improvement on what it usually is, which is big, frizzy, and curly. So yeah, I'm impressed I can get my hands through it without getting stuck. It is smooth and it's shiny at the top, which is something that it hasn't been for a long time. And so far so good. If it carries on like this, like they last, um, I think around three months. So if I can keep like a kind of this level of just smoothness and ease of getting my hands through it, then I feel like this is definitely something that's going to become a recurring treatment because especially with wanting to grow my hair longer it is honestly like it's so helpful and makes my hair so much more manageable. Prince is pink going behind it. It is so fucking disturbing. It is. So she's like, I looked it up and it's, she goes to open the book and he's like, he just recites it by heart. My GD mind. I was like, that's, is that my dad? Like, is that my dad? <laughs> Good evening. I am struggling not to fall asleep. I don't know why either. I don't know whether it's because I haven't had a particular hectic day. I didn't 
go to bed especially late last night and I also didn't get up especially early this morning but I tend to find that the less I do the more tired I feel so I'm wondering if that's responsible for why I just cannot keep my eyes open right now and I especially was struggling to keep my eyes open when I was finishing up the last 40 pages of Famine by Laura Thalassa which has come in at a two star for me. The first book Pestilence I gave three stars wasn't the best but I thought it was a really good time. Book two War loved it four stars this one I expected great things from and it's it's come in at a two. And so I can't even tell you what it was about this that I disliked so much because Famine in himself was a horseman. I mean, he was all right. It took a while for him to win me over. I feel like we were halfway through the book before I even cared about him as a love interest at all. Some of the things that he was doing were sexy. I liked how flat his speech could be and how like flat as in like deadpan and also some of the banter. But then a lot of it also felt cheesy. And I don't know if like, I didn't feel chemistry between him as a love interest and the main character. I don't know whether it's me. I don't know whether I'm not in the mood for romance because one of these sex scenes in here that I was reading this morning was actually making me feel a little bit nauseous and there was nothing going on. Like there was nothing extreme going on to make me feel sick or anything. It was a pretty like standard sex scene and I just wasn't feeling it. So I am eternally disappointed. I did feel like the plot was quite slow in here and I feel like the characters weren't moving around quite as much as they were in Pestilence and War. So I don't know whether that was the issue because my main just thing with this is that it was a drag it was boring i didn't have a good time and the extra star it gets the reason it's a two star and not a one is because i enjoyed famine as a character to an extent and i also liked that the main character was a sex worker and the dynamic that that provided and also the fact that she's been abused by people in her past and that added an interesting dynamic in terms of her viewpoint on famine's actions as like a horseman of the apocalypse and like her opinions on the the fact that he's killing everyone. The end was a little bit different from War and Pestilence as well. I was definitely expecting this to go in the same kind of vein as those two, but I do feel like, as I kind of predicted when we got to War, death is going to add a little bit more to the story because it's also going to wrap up the series as a whole and not necessarily bring any additional real plot into it, but wrap up the whole apocalypse thing as a whole and put like a, a full stop after that. So I guess I'm intrigued to see how that plays out because it seems like we're going to have a little bit of a situation that's going to add an extra dynamic into death that's going to break up the kind of formulaic very samey plot structure of the first three books in this series thank you very much to bobby for gifting this to me as well bobby did actually predict that farming would be my favorite and i mean i'm sorry to disappoint i had faith that he would be my favorite as well but it turns out that we were all just completely wrong about that. So next, I think we're gonna move on to something completely different. I haven't read any of Promises and Pomegranates, but I have because this is on KU. I found that I really could not read this as a physical book. I was reading like three pages every 30 minutes. It was real bad. So I downloaded it on KU and I was reading it on my phone and my iPad and I was getting through it so much faster. So I feel like I am going to progress a little bit with Promises and Pomegranates now or like over the next few days because I won't be reading this on ebook and I don't know maybe I'm in some type of mood where I can't read books physically very well right now which I hope isn't the case because the next physical book I'm going to be picking up that's going to be my main read is actually The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, which is the first book in the Wheel of Time series. I am so nervous about picking this up. Obviously, Wheel of Time is a staple of the fantasy genre, and I am co-hosting the read-along that Sandra from Got A Thing For Things has organized. So like, I'm committed to this for the long haul. I, I just don't know how I'm gonna feel because I've heard that it's long, slow, and boring. I've heard that it's super compelling and fast-paced. I've heard that it's very Tolkien-esque, which scares the shit out of me because I don't enjoy Lord of the Rings. I've heard so many conflicting things about this series on top of that as well. I've heard the series itself is super slow and nothing happens. I've heard that the payoff is amazing, but I've heard that the first four books aren't good. And then there's also a slump in the middle, which I guess is books like six to 10. So I just truly like everyone has a different opinion and not a lot of them seem to actually marry up and coincide with each other. So I really just don't know what I'm supposed to be expecting from this. I'm really excited to get into it though because I am super in the mood for high epic fantasy right now but at the same time look how much text is on a page like we are talking top to bottom 
So your girl is hoping that this isn't dense. I mean, it's a good time for me to read it right now because I do have a little bit more free time. So at least if I am struggling my way through it, I have a little bit more time to actually dedicate to it. So wish me luck. A big thank you to my girl Cody for gifting me this way back when. And also a big thank you to Ashley because this is actually my Patreon pick for the month of, I think it's November. And then it also coincided with me co-hosting the Wheel of Time read along. But I'm scared, guys. I hope I enjoy it. Happy Boxing Day, aka my favorite day of the year. If you guys don't know what Boxing Day is, it is the day after Christmas. I know that the UK aren't the only country that have Boxing Day, but I know that there's a lot of places around the world that don't. I actually recently found out that the name comes from when people used to box up things to give to the poor the day after Christmas. But for me, it is a very nostalgic day. It is, it's literally my favorite day of the year because when I was a kid, Christmas Eve was spent with like, certain family members like had Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day was all of the family and obviously Christmas Day while it's magical while it's wonderful there's a lot of kind of expectations and obligations that come along with Christmas Day and then Boxing Day was like the first true day of my Christmas holidays and I honor that every single year so it's a do nothing day when I was a kid my mum used to make like a Boxing Day roast but my dad would be just watching movies like there'd be movies on TV and and I would be like going through all of the gifts that I got for Christmas and that was the first point that I'd like have time to enjoy them which as a kid I, I mean I know it's materialistic but as a child like obviously you're very excited about your gifts and on Christmas day there's too so much going on that you don't really get time to enjoy them which is the reason why I used to love Boxing Day so much and 
that's kind of just continued. So today I'm going to be doing a lot of reading. I'm going to be playing some video games and just having a grand old time. So this morning I got up and I've read 50 pages of Eye of the World. I'm only 70, no, 86 pages in. Um, so I, I don't feel like with the size of this book and the scope of this book, I don't feel like I'm far enough in to really give you too much information about it. But I definitely understand why people move through this quite quickly. It is in no way fast paced, but the writing I'm finding very compelling and a lot more readable than I thought it was going to be. Like I thought that this would be dense. And while there is a lot going on in terms of the world building and lots of like the magical kind of things are referenced as opposed to explained this early on in the story, I'm really, really enjoying the writing style. So I'm excited to continue on with this. But because it is quite slow going, I do want to be breaking this up throughout the day and reading other things in between. So I am going to be dipping in and out of Promises and Pomegranates as well because I'd like that finished before the end of the year. And I'm also going to be reading Laura Olympus Volume 3, which has arrived recently and I wanted to read it as soon as it came. But I did read Volume 1 for Boxing Day last year and fell in love with it. Like it ended up as like a last minute addition to my best books of the year list, which is why you shouldn't post those before the end of the year, in my opinion. But this is the third volume. It's a bind up of a webcomic that is a retelling of a lot of the gods and goddesses that we find in Greek myth, but particularly it is a Hades and Persephone retelling. So this doesn't shy away from some of the more difficult stuff and the more hard hitting stuff that happens in Greek myth. Content warnings in here for sexual assault and also domestic abuse among other things. But what it does is it modernizes all of these characters. It makes them a little bit relatable. It takes those things that they're known for and the issues that are seen in Greek myth and it puts them into a modern context which adds to the relatability. It's funny. I like the twist that Rachel Smith has put on it whilst bringing them up to date. And Hades and Persephone, volume two, I didn't love as much as volume one, but volume one was just 400 pages of mutual pining and I adored it. So I do know that you can read this online for free, but I personally am just gonna keep up with the print volumes because I don't wanna get sucked into a rabbit hole where I read like hundreds of installments in this comic and I'm up to date and then I have to like read it two weekly because I just personally don't enjoy reading web comics in that format. It's a little bit more anticipation, you know, reading them like this. So this is gonna take me about an hour, an hour and a half, and it is going to be the next thing that I read and I'm super, super hyped. But there was something that I wanted to open for you guys yesterday and I completely, am I even in focus? Cause I don't know if my camera can see my face, but there is something that I wanted to open up for you guys yesterday, but I ended up going to bed. I just, I'd eaten way too much. I drank not too much, but I was drinking early in the day. <laughs> so I was feeling quite tired, like 5 p.m. felt like midnight. But this has arrived from, well, not from my wish list, because my wish list isn't open, but I'm assuming from one of my patrons. A couple of books arrived as well, but I am going to be opening them up a little bit later in the week. You guys will see what they are. But my Patreon 24 hour readathon is coming up, and I want to open them on live, like during that readathon. You'll, I'll talk more about it when it gets close to the time, and you'll see why. But this. At first I thought it sounded like Maltesers, but now I feel like it sounds like a jigsaw. So I'm really intrigued to see what this is. Oh, oh my God, it's for the babes. It's for, I'm sorry. Was this, oh my God, it was an advent calendar and I never opened it for you. I'm so sorry. Baby, it's for you. No, you don't. Why the cardboard though? It's from Ash, of course it is. It says, these are pet friendly soy waxy melts. I hope you find or mix and match the scent you love. So this is a mixed, mixed wax melts for the wax warmer that Ash recently got me, which is over there somewhere. You probably can't see it. One of these smells like super Febreze. Ooh, oh, there's quite a few in here. That's really cute. So they're all heart shaped ones. Um, and as I'm assuming every color is a different scent. These are pet friendly, but that doesn't mean you can eat them. Oh my God. We have a color guide as well that tells you what the scent is. There's something in here. I don't know which one it is, but it smells really good. It's Palmer Violets. Of course it is. I love Palmer Violets. Thank you so much, Ash. As usual, you do the most. I am gonna, is this for cats and dogs? Cause there is a cat and a dog on the front. Yeah, it is. Where's the hell gone? Sit. Sit down, look at me. Look at me, Paul. Good girl, have a little treat. 
Oh, there we go. Anyway, I'm going to go and make myself a very large turkey sandwich and also cut myself a really thick wedge of homemade sausage roll and then get on with reading Laura Olympus. <laughs> Good afternoon, just it's a minute past midday. I am trying out a new filming location today. I've just filmed my January TBR, which is a TBR that wasn't supposed to exist. And I didn't think there was anything on it. And then I filmed it. And there's quite a few books that I do need to read in January. So that's fun. But I, I didn't really update you guys yesterday. I did plan on updating further throughout the day but I was just so chill I was just so cozy so I didn't but I did finish Laura Olympus volume three and I can confirm this one is a five star read I, it doesn't have the magic of the first volume I feel like I, I'm a person okay I can do something once and if I'm successful at doing that thing once I can never do it again because I remember this is kind of irrelevant <laughs> I always remember like if I did it my brain just goes oh well that was easy so you don't need to put any effort into doing it again which obviously I mean you do the reason why that I felt like that was a relevant story is because I feel like I love the first book in a series I love exploring new things if it's a five star for me in terms of like books or if it's something that I really love I love the magic of finding that out like the discovery when you realize that something is a five star or something you really enjoy i need to stop automatically comparing this to books even though that is what we're talking about and then i feel like when we get into the second and third books in the series i am expecting to feel that magic again but the magic is actually the discovery of the thing and not actually necessarily the thing itself that's bringing that extra level of feeling so obviously this didn't bring the same level of magic as book one in the series did but it was still a great time and I still really enjoyed it, especially towards the end of this. Like I said, this does deal with some heavier topics, especially sexual assault in this one. Kind of a continuation of things that we've seen earlier in the series. But I just love Hades and Persephone. They're so cute. Like they're like two bumbling idiots that are into each other, but neither of them feels comfortable saying that they're into each other. So they just kind of like bumble around not really addressing their feelings and like i don't know it's just so sweet something that i really love especially when it's comic series is when you become so invested in the story and the characters like there's some real bitchy characters in here and i hate them with every fiber of my being and i just i love it when books in general elicit that kind of reaction from me but especially when it comes to comics because i feel like the i'm not a visual person you know like it, i i never thought i would like comics because my brain doesn't care about pictures like it just skims over them a lot to get to the text and i have to properly like make myself slow down and focus so so when a comic has that effect on me it always like sticks with me a little bit more because I never expect to be that invested so um yeah I'm now fully up to date on this series and five stars for this one I think with volume two it just took it away from Hades and Persephone a little bit and it was more about them individually whereas I wanted more of that mutual pining vibe that we definitely get in this one and especially towards the end I think that's what it is because we got more into that again towards the end of this but throughout the middle it was more like bringing it back to that point so I'm really excited for volume for which i'm assuming is out sometime next year and yeah i need to find somewhere new to put these though because they're on top of the romance bookshelf upstairs but um, the top of that is very full now because i have quite a few romance hardbacks so i am um, i don't know what i want to do my comic book store has a 20 percent off sale on everything until the uh, like end of business tomorrow so i kind of want to go but that's an hour away and i don't really want to go out and i also need to edit my tbr and possibly make thumbnails for the 
sprints for the readathon my patreon readathon that's going to be happening over tomorrow and thursday so yeah i don't know what the rest of the day holds aside from editing but hopefully i'm going to make more of a dent in this i'm kind of aiming i feel for 50 pages a day in this because i want to properly concentrate when i'm reading it and i have also started tabbing so um yeah i don't want to read that too quickly so i have 50 pages of this to read editing to do and then whatever the evening brings probably final fantasy 10 i'm currently in the omega ruins and i made it like i got all the way through and then i died on the final boss fight so then i had to take a break for a couple of days because i i had to do it all again because there's only one save point that's right at the beginning of the omega ruins i do have no encounter weapons which makes it a little bit easier but now instead of going all the way up to where ultima is and like just trying to do all of that section in once every time i complete like a smaller area of that i'm coming back and saving it to save myself the hassle of having to do it yet again so um yeah if you've never played final fantasy 10 that will mean absolutely nothing to you but for those of you that have that's what's going on cats <laughs> Am I right? Like, sir, I'm trying to edit here. Can you get back in your car? Close. Good morning. It is almost 10 a.m on Wednesday the 28th, which is the first day of my Patreon 24 in 48 hour readathon. I did set an alarm for 8 a.m. I wanted to get a workout in and get my shit together before I actually jumped into the readathon, but alas, um, just being not having anything to do means that I'm not really getting out of bed. <laughs> I can't lie. So yeah, I only got up at like quarter past nine. But I I do need to tell you guys what I'm reading for this readathon. The prompt is most recent purchase, which on the Bookopoly board means whichever book you most recently acquired. So it could be a gift or something you borrowed from the library, something you took out from KU. But that is the book that you have to read. And to make things, I guess not more fun because like that's an exciting prompt anyway I did have two amazon parcels that arrived after i filmed my haul but before christmas so i decided that i would open them up or open one of them during the first live sprints for my readathon and that is the book that i have to read because it's the book that i most recently opened i do have the two books that i bought yesterday i did go shopping in the boxing day sales and i picked up glow and legends and lattes so if i get through these two books in the two days then i will move on to probably legends and lattes but yeah <laughs> i just wanted to pop in and let you guys know that the readathon is starting so we're throwing more spanners in the works i'm already currently reading two books and i'm gonna start at least one more now but my streaming setup now i've upgraded everything a little bit and I now use my actual camera as my webcam so this will be the first time like the main issue with that or the only issue with that really is that if I need to vlog I don't have anything because I can't vlog on my phone because I don't have enough storage because I have like 30,000 pictures and my other camera the one that I had before I upgraded to this one is like you can't put the microphone into it and the microphone's just dead so I'm thinking that I'm going to be able to like turn the camera off on sprints to be able to use my camera as an actual camera but I guess we'll see how seamless that is um so yeah I wanted to let you know that the readathon's happening but I can't tell you what I'm reading until I go live so hang on just a sec and I'll get you that information so it turns out that I can switch between streaming and filming which is perfect so the first book that I've opened up and pulled out is Tangled in Tinsel by Trelina Pucci this is a Christmas smutty novel novella that has been doing the rounds a little bit I know a lot of people have said that they really enjoyed it but I know that Aaron read it recently and also sent me a screenshot of part of it I just wasn't it wasn't doing it for me personally so we'll see how this goes because the majority of people are really enjoying this one and all I know about it is that it is a Christmas reverse harem which I haven't had the best luck with reverse harem so far it's not my favorite so I'm really not sure how I'm gonna feel about this but it is only 270 pages we've just got into the first sprint which is 40 minutes um and it obviously it's not gonna be done so I'm hoping that I can make my way through this in our first set of sprints which I think I'm going till around like four 5 p.m. So we're just past 2 p.m. now and I'm pretty much bang on halfway through this and I'm having a good time with it surprisingly considering I'm not the biggest fan of reverse harem but I feel like the shorter the book is when it's smut or something like this the more I enjoy it I gotta say while I am liking this the reverse harem hasn't started reverse hareming yet <laughs> like everything has been not necessarily one-on-one -on -one, but it's more like warming the female main character up to 
the idea. So essentially the plot of this is that the main character is an interior designer and the details about the character are intentionally left blank so that you can like insert yourself into this role if you would like to and it does say at the beginning that that was the author's intent but she's an interior designer and she's done multiple contracts with these four guys who are all around 40 and are all friends and they're very rich they're very handsome and she's currently decorating a Christmas cabin ready for a party that they're about to have and this storm blows in this freak storm and she ends up snowed in with them over the weekend and they get a little thing going so because it's very impromptu like you find out that these guys were kind of interested in her anyway this is something that they they do together quite frequently but they've been interested in her for a little while and they were going to approach her um, around new year but they found themselves with an opportunity that they didn't expect and so they like the beginning or like the first half of this is them more like warming her up to the idea of this encounter so far it's pretty hot out of the four guys i think my favorite would be cole although i do no i think cole is my favorite they're all slightly different and something that i struggle the most with when it comes to reverse harem is keeping everybody straight in my head and remembering who's who especially when we get to the point that i'm at now we're about to go into the first like proper scene i feel but especially when it gets to this point where there's like four guys in a room and it's just throwing their names about and i've only been acquainted with these guys for 100 pages so i'm trying to remember like who's who because i'm a visual reader remember so i need to be able to situate people in my brain which i gotta say it does get very interesting when we're talking about smart so um yeah i'm having a good time with it and hopefully i can get through the second half in the next couple of hours i have eaten now so in theory there's nothing else i'm going to be moving for in the next two hours so i should be able to do it so i did not quite finish tangled in tinsel because right at the end of sprints i did roll a double so it's just past four i am done with sprints for today now but i made it almost to the end of tangled in tinsel i'm 196 pages into it so my like minimum plan for the day is to finish this which shouldn't be too difficult it's like 75 pages and it is it's a quick read for today i've read oh, 218 i think pages in total and it's been six hours that's quite a lot for me it is partially helped by the fact that i started streaming and doing sprints from my desk where um i know i mentioned in i think one of the last vlogs i did that that does help me focus a little bit so we're going to be finishing this today i am still enjoying it with me being a visual reader we got to the part where everyone got involved and it got all a little bit confusing because there's just men everywhere one thing i will say about this is that it has moments where it's kind of funny like a hallmark christmas rom-com like there's a moment right at the beginning where she's in the shower and it's this fancy shower with loads of buttons and she keeps pressing like lots of things and stuff is happening that's not supposed to be happening like the speakers turn on and the water goes freezing cold so there's like funny like hallmarky movie moments like that but then there's other parts where it's just a little bit too cheesy or a little bit unrealistic and you kind of have to suspend your disbelief that i'm like enjoying a little bit less but overall considering i was a little bit nervous about this one particularly with it being reverse harem i'm having a good time with it i just i don't want it to end with a happily ever after i just want stories like this to be they had a rip roll in weekend and then everyone said goodbye and maybe hooked up a little bit in the future that's all i need from them and then the other book that i opened up was another gift from ash because of course it was thank you so much ash and i'm very excited i have started it i'm 22 pages in and it is brutal prince by sophie lark i have heard amazing things about sophie lark you guys will know madison mary from princess of paperback is my go-to romance girly and i think sophie lark is her favorite author she's just released an anesthesia your retelling aside from that the only thing that i really know that she writes is mafia romance which is what this series is and this i think is a little bit of a spin on romeo and juliet because it's set in chicago and it's following a girl from an Italian family and a guy from an Irish family and the romance is between those two the guy's called Callum and she's called Ada and they're like rival families so the writing is really good so far it's hard for me to describe like there is a certain tone that you typically get with like a smutty romance or a KU romance it's a writing style that almost isn't a writing style it's very basic it's nothing wrong with it it's fine um but I wouldn't even necessarily describe it as a style because it's, it is kind of basic whereas this feels like it has a style like I feel like this is written in a way maybe similar to like Colleen Hoover or Penelope Douglas there's just a little bit more to it where I would, I wouldn't know how to describe it as a style, but I would say that this is definitively 
a style which I mean is silly because the style that isn't like a style is still a style because it has to be you know but yeah I like the writing but it is very early days so I can't really tell you anything about it apart from that the writing's decent so very happy with my 200 and was it 18 page progress for the day my plan for tonight as i mentioned is to work out have dinner and then i'm going to be playing marvel champions with curtis finish tangled in tinsel read more of brutal prints in the morning and then my next round of sprints is going to be late tomorrow afternoon all the way up until somewhere between 10 p.m and midnight depending on when i start to get tired so um yeah hoping because i'm doing so well and this is 324 pages and i've read this one really quickly i'm actually hoping to squeeze a third book into these two days of readathon. Yes, she can defend. Almost. So just yeah. got hydromass in them. Are you not sharing? That's two thirds of the carriage, man. So we're on day two of the readathon and I'm very happy with my progress so far. I did finish Tangled in Tinsel last night. Um, I ended up giving this one three stars. It was good. I enjoyed it. I thought that the smut was hot. And just me in reverse harem, we did get to a point where I was a little bit confused because of the amount of people like in a scene. But I, yeah, I enjoyed the smut. I liked the guys. Um, I liked the funny hallmarky moments for the most part. Some of them were a little bit cheesy. And I actually really liked the ending considering I do prefer these scenarios to be more of a like one night novella kind of situation. That being said, I do think that this was 70 pages too long and I would have preferred it if if it was a one night novella kind of situation. This is classed as a novella, but it is definitely long because it's 270 pages. So if it would have stayed under the 200 page mark, I, I do think I would have enjoyed it just a little bit more. This probably would have been a four star rating from me because it just kind of like the last 70 pages, I just felt like we were dragging on. I love me a romance, but I'm finding with smut <laughs> that unless it is under 200 pages, it is a little bit long and I lose interest because I get Bored. like there's only so many sex scenes that I can read. Thank you very much to Ash for sending this to me. Can you believe that as far as I can remember this is the only Christmas romance that I've ever read? I know. So then I continued on with Brutal Prince and this isn't really a Romeo and Juliet kind of situation aside from the fact that they're from opposing families. I, I realized very early on that I just made that up because they're from feuding families but this is following a girl called Ada who is part of the Italian mafia and her and her brother she's the youngest of her family her and her brother sneak into this party for the youngest of the Griffin family who are part of the Irish mafia and while they're there she accidentally sets fire to their curtains which causes the eldest son from the Griffin family Callum to hunt them down at this like after party and ask about the watch that she'd stolen. So essentially what happened is she picked up this watch to look at it. He came into the library. So she hid with the watch still in her hand. She tucked it in her pocket. She tried to create a distraction to allow her to escape and she accidentally set fire to the curtains. So Callum hunts them down to inquire about the watch and she throws it into the lake. He jumps in after the watch and his bodyguard beats up her older brother and um, shatters his knee. So these two families are like set to go to war over this, but the heads of the families, the two fathers decide that they don't wanna fight anymore. Like both of their families, have lost too many members in conflicts in the past. So instead of fighting, they organize a marriage alliance where Ada and Callum have to get married. But the problem is, is that they hate each other. So like I said yesterday, I love the writing style in this book. It is so compulsively readable, but in a way that is engaging my attention, not that the writing is so bland that it it's not a struggle for me to read it because it's just so easy. You know what I mean? So um, I'm really enjoying this. It's a little bit wordier than Tangled in Tinsel, but because it is like sucking me in immediately, I'm having no problem getting through this. So it is currently midday, quarter past 12, and I need to start editing this vlog 
because it is going up the day after it ends. Curtis is going out tonight to play Yu-Gi-Oh with his friends. So I am going to be doing Patreon sprints from 2 p.m. up until between like 10 p.m. and midnight. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the editing of this vlog just to give myself an easier time tomorrow or Saturday whenever I do the rest of it up until the point where sprints start. And I'm definitely going to be finishing this off in sprints. Like I don't think there is a scenario where I don't finish this book today. And then I guess we'll be picking something else up. I'm in such a reading mood. This is why I wasn't too bad. Even though I haven't completed my December TBR and I'm not going to, this is why I wasn't concerned about it being so large and also why I'm not concerned about my January TBR, which is going up later today, um, which ended up having more books on it than I anticipated. They're actually still here. I haven't put them away. This is my stack of January books. But this, look how much I've read in this vlog across two weeks. As soon as I take away a lot of the things occupying my brain, I can fly through books. And this is the energy I want to be bringing into 2023. Good evening. I've just gone off sprints. I've finished a little bit earlier than I anticipated. I wanted to go to between 10 and midnight, but I did finish Brutal Prince. And as this is a mafia romance, I didn't want to go straight from this into where I'm up to in Promises and Pomegranates, like back to back with very little break. And I just don't have, after being in sprints for like seven hours, I don't have the mental capacity to read like any sort of chunk of this right now. So I called it a day, which means I've kind of called it a day on my participation in my readathon. I mean, there's only two and a half hours left. and I'm very proud of my progress because I've read two books, which adds up to just over 600 pages, which I mean, isn't the most, but it is quite a bit for me because I can't read for extended periods of time. I kind of can go for a few hours, maybe four to five, and then I start to lose focus and get quite restless, which is the point that I'm at now. But I really enjoyed Brutal Prince. I gave it four stars. I, I, I will say that considering this is a romance, the part of this that I was least kind of invested in was the romance between them. The first sexy scene happened earlier than I expected it to in here. I was expecting like a, a kind of building of a relationship before it turned sexual even though they were forced into a marriage and they get married quite early on so I just wasn't feeling the the f the chemistry between them as people and I think that might be because like I've said before that I love sexual tension more than anything else in books and I just I, I wasn't getting that but I love the plot in here there were a couple of different plot threads going on the actual conflicts in the plot resolved differently or like happened differently than I expected it to. And my absolute favourite thing about this is that it was so compulsively readable that I pretty much couldn't put it down even though there's nothing in here that I was so invested in that I would say it's like the best book I ever read. But it was just so compulsively readable that I absolutely wasn't putting it down. The smut was decent in here. There were multiple plot threads that I feel like are going to link up to things throughout the series. I feel like the two main characters as people were maybe not necessarily underdeveloped but they could be fleshed out and made a little bit more three-dimensional. You could have added another like 60 pages on this, bumped it up to the page 400 mark and I absolutely wouldn't have complained. I really liked some of the banter between them and some of the ways especially at the beginning that they were getting back at each other. There is a particular thing during the wedding scene that I absolutely loved in here and I liked that the main character, the female main character was pretty badass. I think Callum was while he was pretty hot, he's not like my ideal love interest, which probably did hamper my enjoyment slightly as well, but loved it, read it so quickly, and I'm definitely very excited to continue on with this series in general, but also read more from Sophie Lark. Like I'd heard she was good, but now I'm sold. So thank you very much to Ash for providing my reading material for this readathon. I enjoyed both of these very, very much. So I'm actually, I'm not gonna read for a little while. I might read a little bit of this before bed, even though bedtime isn't the best time to be reading this because I wanna concentrate. So I might switch over to Promises and Pomegranates, which I think I'm about a hundred and something pages into. Not enjoying that as much as I enjoyed Brutal Prince, but for now, I'm gonna go put my pajamas on, I'm gonna make myself a glass of Baileys, and I'm gonna watch Euphoria while I knit the two rows on my genre blanket for these two romances. So 
it is about time for me to check in and then also check out of this vlog because some way somehow I'm hosting a New Year's Eve party tonight so no reading is going to get done because I'm spending my day editing all of this vlog and also I want to film my wrap up just because I know absolutely nothing productive is going to be done tomorrow so I feel like I might as well just like call it quits and accept my fate. I need to let you guys know my progress in the two books that I'm reading. Promises and Pomegranates I'm I think 31% of the way through I'm about 115 pages into it. As you can tell not really motivated to pick this up too often it's all right but it's just it's just all right really there's nothing like keeping me returning to it which is a little bit different to how i feel about eye of the world by robert jordan both of these books are just gonna continue on into next week's vlog which may not be a week long and that's all i'm telling you um it's a mystery not for me well for me yes actually because i don't actually know what books i'm gonna be reading but i will just like continue reading i'll give you updates on this essentially as we're going through but i have the world by robert jordan having a really good time with this contrary to what some of you guys thought i was gonna think about this aaron i, I really really like it now i am only 124 pages into it so there's plenty of time for me to change my mind but so far so good so what I can tell you about this, this is an adult epic fantasy, of course, we all know that. And I think that the plot surrounds the Wheel of Time, which is the only information that we get in the synopsis. But similarly to a plot line, like quite a big plot line throughout the realm of the Eldlings, everything that has happened happens before. And the Wheel of Time represents an age, I think. And every age, the same things happen again. However, I think that with every age, things are getting slowly worse. And from what I can gather, we have two agents, one for light and one for dark. I'm pretty sure we definitely have one which is the one for dark and i think that the dark agent is the one that's making the world get progressively worse now i'm not sure if the light agent is who i think it is but i feel like the agent of light is the dragon reborn the reason why i'm unsure is i feel like the dragon reborn could actually be a pawn for both light and dark because the dragon reborn has the potential to make things worse or make things better so i'm assuming that the scope of this plot is um starting off in here where we find the dragon and then i'm assuming that eventually at the end of book 15 it ends with the dragon making the world better so the dragon is potentially in my eyes the light agent or possibly a pawn that they both can use to make the world better or worse. I'm hoping that throughout the middle of this series we have some grey morality with the potential of the dragon tipping like either way. We also have the characters of the Aes Sedai in here which are kind of like sorceresses. The main one we meet in the first book is Moraine. I think that they have something to do with maybe being agents for light which might have some is it the one power that they use which is how they manifest their magic but the reason I feel like they may have something to do with it is because Moraine has mentioned that they have knowledge that they previously lost so they have an air of being like extremely knowledgeable and also older than we may think they are by just looking at them. So in terms of the writing I see how it's a little bit Tolkien-esque but I am enjoying it. It's kind of comforting to me in a similar way to how Robin Hobb was just because the tone is so familiar and the setting is so familiar so I can very easily sink into it. Like I haven't been picking it up especially often but I did put it down for two days for my readathon and and like yesterday I didn't read very much at all because I'd spent two days reading. I think I did, I started my Jurassic Park Lego that I got from Ryan for Christmas. I played Marvel Champions with Curtis and I edited some of this vlog because it's so long. But when I did pick this up last night, I flew through like 40 pages really easily and I didn't want to put it down because I sunk into it so easily. With the Tolkien-esque elements in the writing, I know that thematically there's some Tolkien elements in here, but writing wise, I'm seeing where it's going off on a little bit of a description, but it, it's okay at the minute because it's more like a paragraph describing a tree as opposed to a three page description of a tree. So it is descriptive. I see where it's going off on these little descriptive tangents, but it's nowhere near to the level of the Earth Sea series by Ursula K. Le Guin or The Lord of the Rings, which is very good news for me because that's one of the things that I was most worried about. I mean, I know this is classic fantasy, so it does have elements of classic fantasy, but I would say that this is classic fantasy in the way that Game of Thrones 
is because there's a big gap in time between like when Earthsea and Lord of the Rings were published and when Wheel of Time and Game of Thrones were published. So, so far so good. I'm eager to continue this. I don't know whether I'm going to carry on with 50 pages a day or like attempt in 50 pages a day or whether we're gonna like push this more to a priority. It all depends on what happens in that mystery vlog that's coming next. It's not next week. I think it's definitely gonna be more than a week long. How long it actually ends up being, who can say? I don't know at this point. But I do hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog. If you've made it this far, thank you for spending Christmas and what day is it week with me. Happy New Year, because you're seeing this on New Year's Day. I hope you guys have a good one. 2022 has not been the best for me, but I have so many plans for 2023 that I'm really excited about. And I feel like after the pandemic and then after everything in 2022 that was just not good for my soul, I feel like 2023 is the year that I'm actually gonna start living again, which is obviously great news. So Happy New Year to you guys. A big thank you to Book of the Month, of course, once again for sponsoring this video. And if you do you want to check out book of the month for yourself do you remember you can head to the link in my description box and enter the code becca at checkout to get your very first book of the month for $9.99 but aside from that please don't forget to like this vlog if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and i'll see you guys next week happy new year guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you go where nobody knows with guns hidden under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no